don't get my cockiness confused with my confidence. I'm I'm very confident fighter. I prepare to be confident the way I am and don't get it mixed up. Question for you. What is the biggest hype train derailment in all of combat sports history? Answer for you. 2006 Jeff Lacey versus Joe Calzaghe. Let's talk about it. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of the situation, the meat and potatoes, let me just clarify something. What we're talking about today is hype train derailment. Please don't conflate that term with upset because there have been bigger upsets in the past, like Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas comes to mind almost immediately. But there is a big difference between an upset and a hype train derailment. See, in an upset, the fighter that's supposed to win ends up losing and then just goes on kind of being the same fighter. Maybe he has a rematch and ends up winning the rematch, or maybe not. But he doesn't completely lose value as a fighter. In a hype train derailment, a fighter goes from being looked at as completely unstoppable to being looked at as average or below average or even bad and that's exactly what happened in the fight that we're going to talk about today the too long didn't read version is essentially jeff lacy got his ass beat so bad that it pretty much ended his career so let's set the scene joe calzaghe is british jeff lacy is american joe calzaghe is going into the fight as the wbo super middleweight champion and jeff lacy is going into the fight as the ibf super middleweight champion and the fight is taking place in manchester england even though both men are champions and both men are undefeated going into the fight joe calzaghe is not given much of a chance jeff lacy is a really hard puncher joe calzaghe is said to not be able to punch as a matter of fact his nickname is cal slappy because people claim that his punches are like slaps. Jeff Lacey is looked at as the next big thing. They call him the next Mike Tyson due to his fighting style and his looks, his compact, powerful build, and his aggression in the ring. On top of all of that, Calzaghe breaks his left hand very close to the fight and wants to pull out. And his father, Enzo, who also happens to be his trainer, actually has to convince him to fight because it's a life-changing opportunity. If he beats Jeff Lacey, he puts his name on the map with American audiences and he has potential big fights against Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins. So the two end up fighting and what happens is pretty much something that nobody expected. By the end of round one, Jeff Lacey has a bloody nose and by the end of round for he's barely on his feet i mean he looks completely out of it and then there's eight more rounds of just domination just complete ass whooping and even though joe calzaghe isn't the hardest puncher in the world the fact that he's laying combination after combination after combination on jeff lacy's face takes a huge toll on the american and he ends up touching the canvas for the first time in his career in the later rounds and by the end of the fight i mean he looks bad he has two swollen eyes and just looks like the towel should have been thrown in rounds and rounds ago at the time the fight was over people started questioning why it was made in the first place completely forgetting that jeff lacy was supposed to be a huge favorite going in i mean joe calzaghe was just too fast too technical and brought so much volume and pressure that jeff lacy just couldn't deal with it he couldn't figure him out at all even when the fight is a complete mismatch usually the fighter that's losing at least has a moment or two Jeff Lacey had no moments. He had no answer. There was no point in the fight that you could turn to and say, hey, at least Jeff Lacey did something here. He did nothing. He just was completely outclassed. It was bad. I mean, he just beat him down from round one to round 12, and it would have been a complete shutout with Joe Calzaghe winning every round. And the only reason it wasn't is because he got a point deducted in round 11 for hitting Jeff Lacey on the break. And to add insult to injury, at one point, Joe Calzaghe goes back to his corner and tells his dad that Jeff Lacey can't punch for shit. And after the fight, Joe Calzaghe went on to fight Bernard Hopkins and Roy Jones Jr. as planned, albeit past their primes, but he ended up beating them and retiring undefeated. Jeff Lacey, on the other hand, ended up winning a couple more fights, losing some, but he was never looked at as the same fighter, and the hype around him completely dissipated. Like I said, it killed his career. So yeah, that was the biggest hype train derailment of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, dislike, good for the algorithm, comment, subscribe, maybe, I don't know, for more of these, uh, for more of these bangers. Uh, and uh, I'll see you soon.